this is this is one of my favorite EMC related diagrams. It shows you the envelope of a spectrum of a trapezoidal pulse signal. Okay, but what does really mean? All we can see from this diagram is that given a trapezoidal pulse signal, we have a spectrum profile which has two corner points, and the corner point A can be calculated by 1 over pi d, where d is the on time of this pulse, and corner point B is relates to the rise and fall time of a pulse. So this point can be calculated by 1 over pi t, where t is the rise or fall time of this signal. And we also know that between point A and B, the signal decrease in a rate of 20 dB per decade, quite a slow rollout, whereas above uh, point B, we have 40 dB per decade rollout uh, slope. That means as your frequency increase, your signal, signal drops uh, much faster. So what does this all mean? So in this section, we're going to demonstrate the point by doing some interesting tests. Well, first of all, let's have a look at um, the equation we mentioned. So here we have this EMC calculation sheet, which you can download from my website for free. Um, we have a rise time, T rise, in this uh, Excel sheet. And we have the second corner frequency calculation, which is basically is a very simple uh, equation there. So we type in 3 nanoseconds, 30 nanoseconds, and 300 nanoseconds rise time, and it gives us 106 megahertz, 10.6 megahertz, and 1.06 megahertz. Okay, so which means the corner point B in previous slides, as you, if you can remember, if we have 300 nanoseconds rise time, we expect that B, point B, sits at 1 megahertz. Whereas if we have 3 nanoseconds rise time, it will be somewhere uh, around 106 megahertz. First, let's have a quick look at the test setup. As you can see, we have three equipments here, which is spectral analyzer, function generator, and oscilloscope. Going to the details of the spectral analyzer, as you can see, we select the bandwidth to be 9 kilohertz and using an EMI filter type. The frequency span is between 10 kilohertz to 100 megahertz, and we're using log rhythmic scale to show the spectrum results. The spectrum analyzer is connected to a function generator. In this case, the function generator is configured as a tracking mode. So output 2 always follows output 1. So the output exactly the same signal. And for this test, we basically just change the duty ratio of a power signal and also change the rise and fall time. And also you can increase and decrease the switching frequency. Oscilloscope shows the switching frequency uh, of the signal, but the most important of all uh, is you can actually look at the rise time of a, a switching pattern as well. We set a power signal to be uh, switching at 100 kilohertz with 100 millivolts peak to peak voltage and a duty ratio of 50%. Notice that the rise and fall time is currently set as 300 nanoseconds, quite a large uh, value. On the oscilloscope, as you can see, that's the switching pattern. And if we zoom in, we can actually uh, see the rise time, as you can see, is roughly 300 nanoseconds in this case. Moving to the spectral analyzer. Now, this is interesting. We can see a fundamental frequency at 100 kilohertz. That's the switching frequency of the switching pattern. Notice the second uh, largest harmonics content is the third harmonics, which is 300 kilohertz. Then the fifth and seventh, then ninth and eleventh. So all odd harmonics. We don't see any even harmonics at all. So why is that the case then? Notes that here we set the duty ratio to be 50% precisely. What if we change the duty ratio? So if I just change from 50% to 40%, what's going to happen? Look, all of a sudden, the, the even harmonics content starts showing up. That's the second, that's the fourth, that's the um, 
is that the sixth or the eighth? Yeah, as you can see, really, um, this is related to duty ratio. So the closer you get to 50% duty ratio, the higher odd harmonics that you will see on your spectrum uh, results. What does that mean? Well, for one thing, if you are doing a converter design, let's say you do a DAB, do active bridge, you know, uh, often it runs about 50% duty ratio. What you will see on your conducted and radiated emission results is that you're going to see a lot higher odd harmonics compared to even harmonics. Same applies to converters such as a forward converter, for example. Normally, forward converter cannot exceed 50% duty ratio because you need to demagnetize the transformer. So often people push to that close to 50% duty ratio, and then as a result, you will see third, fifth, seventh harmonics higher than the second and fourth. Okay, so that's the first uh, lesson here. Now, if we change back to 50% duty ratio again, okay, so now you can see change back to 50% duty ratio. Let's look at the impact of changing switching frequency. As you can see here, we are using the 100 kHz switching frequency switching pattern as a reference. In this case, the rise and fall time would keep it as 300 nanoseconds, where we only change the switching frequency. As you can see, if I change the switching frequency to be 50 kHz, basically a half of the 100 kHz, as you can see here, the impact is really, I would say, about dB-ish across a very wide frequency range. So that's the impact of changing a switching frequency. As you can see, it doesn't have uh, any impact when frequency is high. As we know, the higher frequency performance is really related to your switching speed rather than the switching frequency. So now if we change the uh, switching frequency to be, say, 25 kilohertz, right, as you can see, um, the energy is actually even lower. Now let's have a look at the impact of the rise time. In the first case, we, we have 3 nanoseconds rise and fall time. We keep the switching frequency still the same, 100 kilohertz duty ratio 50%. As you can see, this is our, our spectral analysis. The, the 20 dB per decade rollout really didn't even change because according to our uh, calculation, the rollout should really happen at 100 megahertz at here. You should see the 40 dB per decade rollout at this point. So as a result, we've got very high energy all the way to 100 megahertz. Okay, so if I just freeze this result, now enable trace 2. Now if I change the rise time to be 30 nanoseconds, okay, so by an order of an magnitude so everything else is the same except that the rise time changed from 30 from 3 to 30 nanoseconds now this is the result okay so as you can see again according to our calculation when you have 30 nanoseconds rise time the 40 db per decade rule out really starts from 10 megahertz and that's exactly what we have seen here so before 10 megahertz the Performance is pretty much the same, but after 10 megahertz, we got this 40 dB per decade rollout, which means here you have less problem to worry about once you increase the rise time. Uh, what about 300 nanoseconds then? So 300 nanoseconds rise time, okay? And we are going to use trace three. And look at that. 3 nano, 300 nanoseconds rise time, we know it will start rolling at 1 megahertz. So above 1 megahertz, the noise um, dropped quite significantly, because as you can see here, the big dB difference between the three, uh, between the three scenarios.